I'm Ivani Monroe from MissFabulous.com, reporting exclusively for Z Trends, and we're in the West Village of New York, right on the border of Soho, where we're paying a visit to the loft apartment of Bonnie Young, who is a very prolific and creative children's wear designer. So let's go on up and see what she has to offer. Tell me a little bit about how you got in the industry to begin with. Well, I actually studied mostly fine arts. I went to Cornell and my best friend at the time, and who was a pre-med student, his father grew up with Ralph Lauren. And I needed a summer job. I needed to get make some money, so they got me a job with Ralph Lauren, and that's really how my career started. I stayed there for several years. Now, did you start in children's wear at Ralph Lauren? No, 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 no. I actually am an adult, desi a women's designer. Okay. And I started doing children's when I had my own children. And now I'm doing women's as well. I worked for Donna Karen for many years. I was right. the creative director at Donna Karen. I, I was there for 16 years. Just so, a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing women's, but then I had my kids and I couldn't find anything. Oh, so having the kids is what exactly. moved you into the children's wear yeah. industry. So I had my children and I started making clothing for them and it organically developed into a real business. Wow. Yeah. So you're originally from New York, but mm -hmm. you've moved around quite a bit in your life. Mm -hmm. um, how has all of that transitioning from different place to place influenced what you do now? Well, you don't have no idea how much I've moved around. <laughs> I actually, I lived in many places, but I also traveled around the world. For Donna, I was constantly looking for inspiration. So I actually have been to places like Mongolia, Papua New Guinea, the North Pole, all over China, all over Asia. I've been to India several times, and I think that that has influenced my design aesthetic. My collection has a very international appeal because it's sort of a culmination of many cultures. You said that you've been to India several times. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite place in India? Actually, I loved the desert. In India, it was fantastic. Yes. I mean, it was really quite beautiful. And I was also down at Trivandrum. Okay. And I was, you know, that was more holiday. The south of India is incredibly colorful. I think that most people go to Jaipur and and Bombay and, and think, Agra. And yeah, things. yeah. Yes. But I think the south of India is probably the most colorful I've seen. And they influence me. And they influence designers because it's really when you're looking at all the vintage shows you pick up um, these sort of details that are actually really come from the core soul of these native traditional people. Countries like that that have such a rich cultural mm -hmm. background really are like great inspirational sources. Yeah. Maybe. I published a book, by the way. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, called Colors of the Vanishing Tribes. I went around the world and photographed disappearing tribes. You really are a Renaissance woman. <laughs> <laughs> I did that while I was at Donna. Wow. Yeah. Now, moving on to your, your children's wear collection, mm -hmm. fall will be hitting the stores very shortly. Yeah. And I understand your inspiration for that collection was Lara and the Wolves, taking yes. your inspiration from Dr. Zhivago. Yes. Yes. How did Dr. Zhivago inspire you? Well, I'm very inspired, first of all, by Russia. Okay. By not necessarily Russia today. I haven't. More imperial it, Russia? It, yes. Okay. And actually, I am Russian by blood. My, gra my grandmother was, Russia, was Russian. She came here when she was three. I've always been very, not necessarily influenced, but drawn okay. towards that culture and I love the film and I was also I was really inspired by the cold and wolves as well, well and I'm the whole really, ice castle thing it just I'm really looking forward to looking at this collection because oh, you haven't it, seen it no I have not oh, seen it okay. and this is this is one of my all-time favorite movies it goes up there in my top 10 of movies um, wow. My my background is Russian as well, so I, I relate to it, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited to see what it is all about. How did all that influence your fabric choices? Well, first of all, I have to say that I used no real fur this okay. season. I used all fake fur, okay. because I think the inspiration of wolves was really important to me as well, and so I thought that as sort of an honor to the wolves, I couldn't actually use real, real fur. fur. I do use fur, I shouldn't say that. 
but I did. <laughs> but it but was just for this collection. Right. I really did not want to use real fur. Okay. And when you see the collection, you'll see that the pieces, in a way, look like the mix of the darkness of Russia with the ice and that you know the ice castles that was there and wolves and the different speckles of blacks and whites and snow against dirt. Wow, I'm, I'm excited. Maybe we should take a look at the line. Love okay. to show it to you. Looking Great. at the Dr. Zhivago, Lara and the Wolves collection. <laughs> Can you show us what the pieces are and yep. the details of the work, um, where they came from? Absolutely. Give us the whole story. Okay. Well, this is, which is one of my favorite pieces. Actually was embroidered in India. I can tell the quality, the workmanship. Yeah, yes. and it's um, chiffon, sort of shredded chiffon over um, fake fur, over ah. st strips of fake fur. So, you know, the whole point is, like, I want, I had these wolf images that have sort of hair that looks all melange. Okay. And I gave it to them and I asked them to do an evening sort of dress out of it. So. That's beautiful. Yeah. And this is very, these two are very Dr. Zhivago. Ah, uh, yes. So there's a bit of, you know, fake fur again. And it's got this sort of 60s feel. So they're modern, but with a bit of a 60s influence, bit of a Russian influence, but yet they're not, you can't really pinpoint where they're from where the influence came from, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, it's taking some, I, like, maybe some classic 60s type shape, but making them so yeah, modern. Yes, yes, and this is re-embroidered lace with sequins on it. Beautiful. So it's covered sequins, and they're covered with tulle, and this was, is like a classic, sort of traditional embroidery okay. that I reinterpreted. Now, now tell me, on a piece like this as an example, what was, how did you get to this point? What was your design inspiration for this particular piece and how did it all come together? I did a jacket like this too, which is absolutely amazing. So this was really just pulled from different pieces of embroidery swatches and I changed the fa I changed it slightly and then I decided to make it into a dress. Cool. So this um, original embroidery was on this old wool kind of thing that is unrecognizable to the way it actually finished. Yeah, Brilliant. I mean like look this piece is kind of incredible. So These are all feathers? No, no this is fake. This is faux fur again wow. and it's lined in chiffon. And then just to spice it up a bit. I did these embroidered neck trims. This piece is kind of amazing also. Again, done in India, the embroidery. And this is all chiffon, sort of manipulated chiffon and covered um, Swarovskis. So you sort of see them, but you don't. You see a little glimpse, but you can't actually see what, that they're there. So you get that little bit of a flash every now and yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. But the three-dimensionality of all yeah. the texture is really yeah. gorgeous. This was another piece that was all about manipulation of fabrics. There's a pin in here because we're doing a fashion show soon, and so which so this is kind of pulling all this mani together. manipulated pleated organza. Yeah, and wool. And wool. Did these again fake? Faux snakeskin jackets with faux trim. Faux fur. I yes, the, these are these are faux each faux. one of these pieces. I have to say is like a little art piece. Each yeah. one, it's like it's not just clothing; it's art. Did you see this as well? This is like again. It was. It's like you know. I've never been up close to a wolf, so I. It's, <laughs> it's the way that I imagine it. Right. But, you know, the fur, sort of like this matty kind of wild dog fur. So then this is a lace over... This is a re-embroidered lace over a nylon, and it's down. Ah, uh, so like, almost like the puffer jacket. Yeah, it's a puffer vest. That's yeah. really cute. 
for and the sequence. Yeah, and the sequence. Yeah. It's interesting. This to me, this is like a collection for the budding Blair Waldorf. Blair Waldorf <laughs> as, a, as a child, or the Serena Vanderwoods. And it's just I can just imagine each of them as little girls wearing these outfits. Well, my clients are. The, uh, the, I'm sure that is your clients. Exactly. So. Okay, so now the big question is, where do we find these beautiful pieces of art? Well, I have a freestanding store okay. in Aspen, Colorado. So we don't sell online, but you can go online and choose whatever you please, and okay. then it directs you to the store, and we do send packages out to our customers. Okay. As well, we're selling in Harvey Nichols in London, in the UK, and we sell at Mercury in Russia, and recently we've had another big client in the Middle East, Tutti. Okay. Who carries a very large portion of the collection. We have several that uh, we sell to in Singapore to Club 21, which is Kids 21, the kids sh section. Okay. And then we have some other stores that have a smaller amount of the collection. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.